Earlier this week, I had started wrapping my dash trim with 3D carbon fiber vinyl, as you can see here and here. Now, because this was my first attempt at doing uh, vinyl wrapping on trim pieces, I don't have an actual DIY video because I was still learning it myself. Um, I do have a video that talks about some of the tips that, that I'm going to give you for getting this particular piece wrapped because it's probably the hardest piece to wrap due to its shape. Um, if you can get this piece wrapped first and get it done successfully, the rest of the pieces should be easy. So the next thing that I want to do is the steering wheel. Um, this I will show you how to wrap. The first thing you want to do though is go into the engine bay, take a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the nut here, and then remove the negative terminal. Once you get that done, if you look on the side of the steering wheel, you're going to see a plastic panel here. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it while I'm holding the phone, but basically you want to come in here with a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pop this piece out and then you can uh, remove it this way. Uh, the, the other side actually is a lot easier. Let me see if I can get it with this one hand. So you can see the other one here has got a hole for the cruise control knob. So you can just take your finger on the side and pull that way and out. So here's what it looks like on the back side to give you an idea. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, show you how to get the airbag off now. All right, so this is what you're gonna see once you get that plastic piece off. So if you look right here, this is the uh, pin that's holding in the airbag and it's being held in place by this wire, which is actually a spring wire. So all you need to do is take a flathead screwdriver, press the wire in this way, and if you if you notice, this just popped backwards. And if you look, you can see that the airbag has now loosened on this side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and then the, the airbag should be able to come off. So you'll see that there are two wires here and then there's actually a ground wire like a, a metal spade behind here so you'll want to take a flathead screwdriver and just kind of wedge it underneath of this yellow plastic clip here and just lift the clip up just like that there you go just like that and then just take your screwdriver underneath the corner here and just kind of lift it up and that'll pop out we'll do the other side as well kind of Get the screwdriver underneath the yellow tab. Lift it up. And then, boom. So that's it. And the last one is, uh, actually I'm going to need a uh, pair of pliers most likely. Um, but basically just grab a piece of, uh, grab the pliers around right here and then lift this off. It's, it's on there pretty tight. So, alright, I'm going to go ahead, remove this, take the airbag off, and then uh, show you how to get the plastic trim off next. I've partially uh, removed some of the trim already, uh, but I've put it back on now so I can show you what to do next. Uh, it looks like you, know, you will need to remove the steering wheel because there is a screw that's on the back side of this piece here, on the bottom part, and the, the plastic trim here is blocking you from getting to it. You might be able to sort of push it up out of the way to get to the screw, but you're probably going to end up damaging the trim instead. So it's easier to just remove the steering wheel. Make sure your wheels are straight and your steering wheel is straight before you remove it uh, so you can make sure it's lined up. Mine's a little crooked here, but I have the advantage of the fact that I have a video showing me exactly what the alignment is so I can pop it back on this way. All right, so first thing we'll do there is we'll pop this trim off. Um, they're held in place by two screws each. So you just remove these two screws here. Uh, and then there's a plastic clip right about here that's holding this into the steering wheel. So you just want to kind of grab it from the top edge here and pull straight back. There's the clip right there. Um, and then you'll want to remove this harness, the first harness here, the larger one. This goes to your controls here, and then do the same thing. Grab it from the top, and pull straight back, and there's that clip as well. All right, so let me go ahead, get my extension, and we'll uh, take out the nut here so we can get the steering wheel off. I'll go ahead and disconnect the other plug as well. All right, so you're going to need a 19 millimeter socket on an extension. Just pop it on there, give it a 
twist until it loosens. Cool. Um, loosen it up enough, and then the steering wheel is probably going to be stuck on on the on the shaft there. So I'm going to go ahead, bang it from all four corners to loosen it from there. Might need to loosen this some more, but you might need to just keep repeating this process um, until the steering wheel comes off the shaft get the nut completely off and then remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this until I can get the steering wheel out. All right, I had to give it two good whacks from behind uh, to loosen it off of the shaft here, but the steering wheel is now off. So, all right, so flip it on its backside here, pop this trim off, it's actually attached pretty loosely. And you should be able to see the screw. There it is. So. You'll see two clips here. These are just for alignment um, to make sure this stays straight. All you have to do is remove this screw here and that um, bottom piece will just come right off. So boom, you actually can see it's, just, it's already removed itself. All right, let's go inside and start wrapping this. All right, so we got all our pieces here. The uh, first thing we need to do though is, is remove the buttons from here. They're holding place with three screws here, here, here I've already removed them uh, once you take the screws out you're going to basically pull it from the top part here and off and this back plate's going to come out um, and then once that's off you can just push all the buttons out and then kind of pop the back plate back on the ear just to keep everything safe um, and then additionally which I'll pop the plate on after I get this thing off here Additionally, you're going to want to remove the zip tie from here, so just take a pair of cutters and carefully uh, cut this off. Just make sure you have some extra zip ties around to reattach this later. Alright, great. So now we're ready to grab our vinyl and start wrapping. You want to cut your pieces of vinyl out so that you're going to have some excess on the uh, on the edges to work with. Keep in mind that we're only wrapping up to, to this edge here. Um, and then you just need to be, have enough so you can sort of just tuck it down into the corner here. So you don't have to have very much um, overhang on this side, but you wanna have enough on the, on the top sides and the bottom to wrap around. So I'm gonna cut out uh, pieces for each of these appropriately. And then uh, I'm thinking I can get away with just having the bottom piece here for this. Make sure that when you're doing carbon fiber that you keep your weave pattern the same. I always make sure for me that the weave pattern goes from the bottom left to the upper right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the pieces now. I've got all of my pieces trimmed out. Um, we can make sure that we have enough. So this top piece here is gonna line up here. I'm probably gonna you know cut this straight so I can just line this over on this top edge here. Um, and we can see I've got plenty of uh, vinyl on the sides to, to pull and stretch and wrap around to get it to conform to the shape. For these pieces here, you're only gonna, you need to have the vinyl at least wrapped down into the corners here. So make sure that you know, if you were to wrap it there and then go around the back side, you'll see I have plenty to also do the wrap around. All right, so with the this particular 3D vinyl from um, Vivid, there is a clear protective layer you need to remove first before you start to work. Some people apparently don't realize that and they've left some bad reviews saying that the top clear coat starts to peel. That's because it's the protective layer. So I've already kind of started peeling it using my X-Acto blade to, uh, to separate the layer out. But here we go. if you just pull it off there, you can now see that's what it's going to look like underneath. All right, so let's start the process. All right, so first off, I'm gonna to wanna to trim the top edge here uh, to be straight so I can basically uh, just tuck that corner into there. Um, make sure again, the carbon fiber pattern is going the direction you want it to be. You don't wanna start cutting it, putting it on and realizing that you have it, you know, 90 degrees off. So first I'm gonna go ahead, line this up here. Line this up there and give it a nice good straight edge on the top. Actually, one second, let me just double check. All right. 
Great, so now I've got a nice straight edge that's gonna line up just like that. We're actually gonna, when we put it in, we're actually gonna push it in a little bit more though, so that it'll basically fold um, down and into there. But let's go ahead and peel the backing off now. Make sure your surface is clean. Go ahead, and we're gonna I'm gonna line it up so it's actually gonna go over this piece a little bit, like here. And it's gonna press it down because it's, the idea is that we want to take and tuck this in. Um, that way, because I don't know what's gonna be quite visible once we reinstall it in the car, and I don't want to have uh, the plastic showing out underneath because I skimped on wrapping it to the to the very edge. So this is very repositionable, so you want to basically just put it on and just kind of get it as flat as possible. Work out any weird bubbles or kinks or folds out until you get it nice and smooth on there. All right, so now I'm going to kind of wedge that in there like this. There we go. And then I'm going to use my um, vinyl tool here to kind of make sure I press that in. So there you go. So as you can see, I mean, there's a little bit sticking out here, but for the most part, this is all behind the plastic now. Okay, so you can see I've got some bubbles here, so now I'm literally going to just lift it up. Um, keep working it down you want to make sure it's nice and flat as possible on here and then come back in so the trick really is to just take your time great so now the next thing to do once it's all smooth is to start hitting it with some heat so I'm using an embossing heat gun um, <laughs> that I borrowed from my girlfriend uh, I like this a lot better than a regular heat gun because it's a lot easier to handle. Um, there's no metal tip on there, so I can just drop it down. And for the most part, I'm not going to worry about it melting something if I put it on, if I actually drop it on a piece of plastic. So we're going to want to just give it a little bit of heat till you see the the, uh, the vinyl start to, to warp a little bit. And then we're going to, when it when that happens, I'm going to basically pull it around and then try to shape it around these edges here. to actually plug it in first. Okay, we'll start with the bottom edge here. Give it a little bit of heat. Lift it up. Kind of pull it, stretch it down and around. Good. So now we'll start to work on the other edges here. Heat. Grab it, start to stretch it. If you see any air bubbles start to happen, make sure you try to work those out ahead of time. Great. So now you can sort of see it's starting to conform to the shape. Now we'll do the other side and then we'll start trimming the excess off. So I'm going to basically trim and give myself about an inch border around, but let's get the other side now. So pull it down. You want to work quickly with this because the vinyl will cool down really quickly. So you want to make sure that you, that you pull, nice on this corner because that's the the corners are really the hardest part to really work around with but if you pull it uh hard enough you can manage to not have any crinkles or wrinkles around the edges here but you don't want to stretch it too much because uh, i mean this stuff is actually pretty tough i haven't torn it yet when i was pulling on it but uh, you don't want to over stretch it too much um because you don't want to risk messing up the the weave pattern all right so great and then uh, we'll go ahead and just get this piece here before we start trimming things down. Okay, and then just come in with this. Do both sides, make sure it's all nice in there. Okay, 
Yep, that looks good. All right, so now let me grab my scissors. Come in maybe three quarters of an inch border around. You don't want to have too much extra vinyl on there when you're done, but you don't want to have, you know, you, you want to have enough that you can at least still uh, grab and stretch to get it conformed to the shape. Now you'll see there's a lot of folds on here. Um, basically as we continue to heat and pull, you can pull those folds out. Uh, as long as they're not showing on the sides, like you can sort of see one right there, then you should be fine. All right, so the next thing is I like to do is I like to try to work on these corners and edges first. So we're gonna anchor down this part here first and then work around the corners uh, and then work our way up. So, get with some heat. And give it a good stretch starting at the corner first and then try to work your way around because you want to get it to conform to that to that edge all right great so nice you don't have any creases there so now we're going to do the other side really quickly grab it stretch it a little bit make sure there's no creases Great, so nice and smooth. Now we're just gonna go ahead and just work on the, the sides here. So I'm probably gonna have to end up doing a lot of lifting and then stretching and pulling to make sure that there's no bubbles or creases. Again, you wanna work quickly. Try not to overheat the vinyl, but definitely get it warm enough to work with and then work quickly. So, whoop, I see a little air bubble there, so I'm gonna lift it up, give it a little bit more heat. Quickly press that down and around to conform to that shape. Come in with my tool. If you've got weird corners like this one here, just you can use your tool to make sure you press the vinyl in. Great, so now you can already see that's taking shape and then we'll do the other side. So, let's see, more heat. So we're going to be doing a lot of heating and pulling and and, uh, and everything like this to get everything on here right. Let's see the air bubble. Yeah, you want to make sure you have no air bubbles on here. All right, so I was just talking about uh, making sure that you heat this up, or uh, anything that you've stretched post heat when you're done. So that's why you need to make sure that you have all of the air bubbles out. But you're not going to do that until you're actually done the piece. Um, and they said 90, 90 degrees Celsius. If you have a way of measuring the surface temperature um, as you're heating it up, that's going to be the best way. Otherwise, you're going to have to sort of just, you know, play it by ear and hope that you're doing it right. But you don't want to do too much heat because you can potentially burn the vinyl or damage the plastic. Um, but you also don't want to, you know, you want to make sure that you uh, do heat it up enough. Otherwise, the plastic will recede or, you know, you might, it might start lifting up at corners that you stretched around. But, all right, so here you go. You can see how it looks so far. Um, I've got a couple of parts here where the, there's a little bit of bubbling there. I need to probably just heat it up a little bit more and stretch it. Make sure that those are all gone and press it down around the side. Do it on this side as well. Great. And now, uh, before I come in with my X-Acto blade and trim this down, you'll, you'll basically want to come in and just and cut the excess off because you don't want to have too much excess on here. Um, double check for any air bubbles. So yeah, I did have, uh, there's an air bubble there. You can see I already have a, a pin out. So I've poked a hole right there. And 
I'm gonna work out that air bubble until it's smooth. It looks like there's another one over here that kind of happened. So it just took a little bit of a hole. Now this this vinyl is nice because you can you can kind of really scrape at it without having to worry about it getting damaged. It's it's pretty resilient from what I've seen. All right, so now that the air bubbles are out, I'm gonna keep it up with the gun and. The holes are basically going to virtually disappear. I'm just going to go ahead and just press it down and make sure that any remaining air is out. All right. Great. So there you go. Nice and smooth. So take your X-Acto blade afterwards and uh, carefully trim around the edge. So you can actually just kind of give it a light scoring. You can just kind of grab it from about here and just give it a light scoring down so you don't have to worry about actually getting, you know, cutting into the plastic underneath, but just score, 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 and then kind of pull, and then just keep going through with your knife. Just work your way around. Corners, there's going to be a lot of extra vial around those corners. I'm just going to score it a little bit here, and that should be able to just kind of pull it right there like that. And then continue to cut. All right, great. So now I got all the excess off. All right, so now you'll see there's um, plastic ridge up here. Anytime you run into one of these ridges, you're gonna, gonna wanna uh, just cut the vinyl here so that you can wrap it around on both sides like that and like that. Looks like there's another one hiding underneath it there, so I'm gonna have to cut the vinyl right there as well. So you wanna make sure you have a nice secure, uh, nice and secure on the back side like that. All right, so I've finished uh, trimming any excess off, cutting uh, cutting any slits here where I need it to. So I'm just gonna press the vinyl back on the back side here. Uh, these corners here, I had to heat it up and, and give it an extra stretch around. I'm gonna leave a little bit more excess there so I have more to uh, more vinyl to hold that in place just for those corners. So now I'm just gonna just go through, heat up the backs a little bit, and press it in place, use my tool to really get those back pieces in place. And just slowly work your way around the corners. You're gonna to wanna to give a little bit of extra heat and press down on those. Um, again, being careful to make sure you don't cause any, you know, creases or bubbles. So now I'm gonna to have to actually come back to that because unfortunately, I should have actually grabbed it and then pushed it down, but I didn't, so let's fix that real quick. So heat it, pull it up, heat it again, push it down. Do the same thing on the other side. Give it a little heat. Lift it up. and then stretch it and make sure you push that down nice and then as you push it down try to pull try to pull it a little bit as you push it down that way you make sure that the vinyl is tight around those edges Great. 
All right, so I'm done this piece. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I know that this gun gets uh, definitely gets over 90 degrees Celsius. So I'm just basically gonna go and carefully just heat all the corners up that I've stretched. And as you do this, you wanna check and make sure the new air bubbles come up. And if you need to, you know, come in, you're, you're gonna to wanna to use your tool to, to do any fixing because you're getting this thing pretty hot, you're gonna burn your fingers or use gloves. So all right, it should be cool enough now for me to come through with my finger. So yeah, so there's a little bit of an air bubble there and it got worse as I started to heat it up. So I've worked it out. So I'm gonna come back, hit that again. Good. So this side should be good. So now basically we're gonna go around to all the corners and edges and make sure I give it a good blast of heat. Yep, see an air bubble forming over there. So I'm just gonna gently work it out. That might actually require me to lift it up a little bit and reseat it. If you can, at least, there we are. So lift it up just enough to get the air bubble out, push it back down. Great, all right, so let me hit that with a little bit more heat, make sure it's all done. And there you go. So you got your first piece wrapped. All right, now for the more fun pieces. All right, so I've brought the steering wheel in um, because these pieces, th this bottom part here is not necessarily 90 degrees. They're, they both kind of uh, go up at an angle. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna just kind of loosely fit these pieces into place. Uh, and then I'm going to peel back on remove the backing from the vinyl, and then I'm going to set it over top of this piece, which is what we're gonna do first, um, and make sure that the weave pattern uh, is the same as the piece that we've already wrapped, because we wanna make sure that everything looks right. So, let me get that set in place there. Great, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of pressure right here, just make it stick, and then pop the piece off, and then we will start wrapping it. Okay, great. So, Again, as with the last piece, you wanna push everything on, make sure that it's gonna be flush. Um, we're not even gonna bother with cutting these holes out until uh, until everything else is taken care of. Those are gonna be the last things that we do. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead, flip it over. Just make sure everything is all nice and flat on here. There's gonna be I'm gonna have to basically gotta fold it down around this corner here. So this is this is definitely gonna be a little bit trickier because of the, the curves on here. So we're just gonna get it flat to the top part here as much as possible. Alright. So the first part that we're gonna boy, this part's gonna be def definitely fun. Uh, first part we're gonna try to do is th this hard piece here this corner is going to be the toughest part. So first we're going to trim the excess off. You want to make sure you don't trim too much. So uh, I'm going to use this as sort of do a, a measure. So about that much out, about that far out cover. So I'm going to want to cut to maybe around here. That way I know I've got enough to wrap. Let's go ahead and just start heating this up and pulling it around that corner. We're going to heat this up and then very quickly, just you're going to have to keep working this and heating it up and working on it to get it to go around this corner because this is going to be the hardest, the hardest corner to do on this piece. I mean, at the same time, you want to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles along the way. So 
You're gonna wanna push down and get any, work out any wrinkles coming over on this side and just keep hitting it with heat and working on this piece. And it might not seem like it, but eventually it's gonna get to a point where you'll be able to just kinda flip it over and wrap that piece. But it is gonna take time. All right, so now that I've, I've got a feel of how far it's gonna go, I'm actually gonna trim this down like a little slit like there, just to give myself some more room to work with. You don't wanna cut it down too far, otherwise you might have it, it tear up into the corner there and then you'll see that tear. Alright, so I've got it over that edge, but I still have that bubble there. So, keep working on it. So this is definitely, once you're done this, you, you definitely are going to need to post heat this because there is a lot of stretching here and you don't want this to undo itself um, over time. Great, so now I'm gonna have to got some crinkles here, so I'm just gonna lift it up just a little bit. Give it a little just a little bit of heat here just so I can pull it this way and stretch it to try to get any of those wrinkles out. Lift it up a little bit here. And just keep working it. Lift it up. Pull, stretch. So if need be, I've looked it up more, give it more heat. Work fast, don't stretch too much because you'll, you'll mess up the weave pattern. But if you keep working on it, it'll slowly take shape. But it's definitely a long process. So you're gonna see me constantly pulling this thing up and pushing it down, trying to get all those bubbles out. Until I get it around the corner. All right, good. So I think I've got this side uh, more or less shaped. I'm going to go ahead and heat it up and just wrap these corners around a little bit just to keep it in place. And then I'm going to continue working on this part here. So I'm going to pull, wrap, just to hold it in place. And then we're going to go back to working on this piece here. All right, so I actually cut it down a little bit too much. Uh, I'm trying to cut it a little bit less, but I think I might be able to get away with that. As long as that tear doesn't doesn't start to come around the corner, I should be fine. But that's why you don't want to cut it too much there. Right, we'll just keep working on that and pulling and stretching it. All right. So there you go, so you got this corner down. Next, I'm gonna work this corner here. Hit it with some heat, make sure I get it pressed in. You'll see it sort of take shape there and then just come in, press it down into place. Don't mind my cats fighting in the background. Good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I mean, you saw what I had to do on the other piece. I'm just gonna repeat exactly what I did on the last piece. Um, heat up and just start to you know pull all the corners around. The rest of the corners should be pretty easy. Once I'm done getting the rest of these corners wrapped, um, then I'll show you how to get this one piece here. So I'm gonna go ahead, stop the camera, 
and then just finish getting these corners wrapped and trimmed off. So I've finished the uh, heating and stretching around the corners here. I still haven't trimmed these pieces here, but I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how this edge looks here. This took me about 25, 30 minutes to finally get it like this. I mean, you really have to work this corner, but once you get this corner out, then you'll probably have some wrinkles here and along here. All you need to do is just kind of lift these up on the corner, heat it up, and then just kind of keep stretching it out till you get all of those uh, wrinkles out of the, of the edges here and then you'll end up with this nice smooth corner it's a real pain this is this is going to be the hardest part on the steering wheel to do um, but if you take your time and just keep heating it and stretching it you'll be able to get it around that corner eventually so um all right so the only other difference with uh with wrapping this piece compared to the other ones is this this bottom corner here uh so what i'm gonna do because it's such a sharp corner is i've actually uh stretched the two sides down and then I'm going to just fold the bottom corner like this and then just fold it like that because this is going to be hidden behind and then that way from from the sides you won't be able to really tell so I'm going to go ahead finish stretching this on here pull the two sides and then get the bottom corner Okay, good. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. So now I'm going to go ahead, do the actual trimming, and then get the back corners, and then I'll show you uh, how to get this last side here, and then we'll finish up with the holes. I'm just finishing up getting all the edges wrapped on here. I'm just heating them up to make sure that there's no bubbles, and then make sure that they're going to stay in place. everything looks good so this bottom corner I've also trimmed a lot of the excess off um, and I kind of got the corner started but I can't really do it until I finish trimming this piece here so as you can see it's not quite attached on there so now we're gonna do this edge which is pretty easy all you have to do is just take your exacto blade kind of if you press down on the top here you can see the shape you just kind of you trace a little wide with your exacto blade I mean, it'll cut right through it just very gently. Go around. Cut it around like that, and then cut it down a little here. So we're gonna cut it a little bit big, and then just trim it down um, as you work, because you don't, you want to make sure that you have plenty of it on here. Good. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start heating. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat it up, and then we're gonna use the tool. If you look on here, you can see there's a groove here. We're gonna use the tool to just basically uh, push this into the groove. So let me go ahead and start doing that. Start on one side first, and lift it up a little bit, and then just kind of press it down into that groove. Pull it away from the back piece here so it's not stuck. Because you don't want to, you don't want to stretch it. You want to actually get it to actually, you know, slide down in that groove with minimal stretching if possible. So, there we go. It's going to be a little bit easier to heat it up just a little bit though because it does have to conform to curved shape. Of course make sure that you're pulling it tight around this corner here because you don't want to have any bubbles or, or any slack. And then when you get down to the bottom corner here Kind of work this down through the bottom of the groove, and then you're gonna tuck that in. Now come in with some heat and pull and stretch that tight. 
So unfortunately, I've got a little bit of plastic showing down here, but I think that's going to be hidden um, when I reassemble things. If not, then I'm going to have to redo this piece and it's going to suck. Um, but let's find out real quick. We'll just do a quick test fit on here. So, well, that's good. That's awful. So I made a mistake and I cut that piece a little bit too, too small there. So that's going to be exposed. I'm honestly, I'm going to rewrap this, but I'm not going to do that now. Uh, just keep in mind, be careful with that corner there, not to, uh, cut yourself too short on that. When you do that trimming, I'm actually going to try to see if I can get away with lifting this up and just stretching it some more because you can stretch this to some degree. Um, but basically, once you get that piece done there, then we'll, we can do the holes. So I'm actually going to go ahead and see if I can fix that real quick. Uh, and then we'll come back to doing these parts. All right, great. Crisis averted. So this, uh, this vinyl does stretch a good amount. So I was actually able to uh, just kind of pull it and stretch it out this way a little bit and then wrap it down. So that spot is covered. Now, of course, uh, I hit that with extra, extra heat. I want to make sure that the, that the uh, vinyl uh, is going to lose its memory on that corner because I don't want it to pull back. So, I mean, I've given it, like, lots of extra heat right here. So it's not even trying to shrink anymore because it's, it's pretty much lost its elasticity and memory on there. So, well, I will... Make sure that's yeah it's it's on there pretty tight all right so here's what it looks like once you're done doing the wrapping um i've got all the carbon fiber wrapped down on on this side here and pressed down um i'm gonna go ahead and trim the excess off of here so just gonna lightly score it going across Uh, maybe you have to score it a little bit more. You don't want to, you, obviously you don't want to cut into the plastic when you do this. So just try, try to gently score it. It's also a good practice because if you want to wrap something like your hood or uh, the, the paint on the car, uh, getting some, getting the skills down so that you can just lightly score the vinyl and then have it cut and tear away like this is good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little, little bit of uh, extra excess vinyl on here. This part is going to be hidden by the airbag, and then this piece is gonna be it's gonna go into the steering wheel. So when in doubt, just you know, keep your steering wheel with you. You can just kind of test fit pieces and see how they're gonna look. So we can already see that's gonna look pretty nice once I'm done. So let's go ahead and uh, yep, I've got a small air bubble there. I'm actually gonna take advantage of that there's a hole right here and just push up on it to get the vinyl out and the, off and then push it back down. Great. So no more hole. Now we're just going to go ahead. Get one last good heat and press. Make sure everything looks good and then we're going to go ahead and start trimming out the holes. Alright. So this part's pretty easy actually. The trick for the holes is to cut an X. Um, you wanna leave, as you don't wanna have it be too big though, so I'm just gonna make a small X and leave a small mm -hmm. amount of, uh, of border around the side. So just a tiny little X there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Actually this one, I'm just gonna do a slit straight down. Um, leaving, you know, make, making sure I don't go all the way down and then do the same thing on this side. And then all you have to do for these is give it a good amount of heat, quickly come in, push it down, and stretch. And you're just going to keep heating it up and then stretching it until you get it to wrap around um, in here. Like that. So, put more heat again. Just keep doing that until it's nice and smooth. 
You want to make sure that it's not going to obstruct the, the buttons in there. If you find that it, it, it is a little bit too thick for the buttons to work, then you might have to carefully trim um, trim it off around here so that it's uh, so the buttons don't get stuck. But I'm going to go ahead and just do this one here for now. I think I don't think the button's going to have any problems on here, though. I can't really tell until I finish getting the other holes cut, so let's go ahead and take care of those next. Up, wrap it around. So you finish doing this one before you start on the next one because the vinyl might overlap. You want it to kind of be smooth on the back side. one All right so basically just keep going around and heating it up uh, and you know getting it to stretch until you get it to stick around on the other side um, once you push the buttons back in they'll uh, they'll keep the back piece flat here i'm probably actually going to come around though once i get this wrapped around and just trim it um, i think it'll be it'll be better that way i don't have to worry about the buttons getting stuck but we'll see we'll see how we'll see how tight it is once i get this on here and i'll let you know if i decide to just keep it wrapped around or if i'm going to trim it all right so let me go ahead and finish this up off camera and then uh, and then i'll show you the uh, finished product all right so i've been messing around trying to figure out the best way for for wrapping around the holes and i'm actually going to cut little slits around here so that it'll fold back around easier around the edges and do the same thing for here because you can't really see the sides of these holes once you put the buttons back in so um, you can go ahead and just do this do it for all of them so there 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 Now I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it around the back side, hit it with more heat. When I get this, want to make sure that that's not gonna shrink or do anything like that later down the road and uh, impede the buttons. There you go. That's much easier to go around now. Great. So he, I'll hit that with heat, and then uh, we will reassemble things here in a second. All right. Now it's time to put the buttons back in so it's probably come apart into into a couple of different pieces at this point since you've removed it but pop in the main piece here make sure that the buttons move freely um, they won't have any tension on them unless you push on the back so kind of push on the back and make sure they move freely so these all look good and take the rubber piece here you're gonna line it up so that the uh, so that the copper pieces are, or the metal pieces are facing back. Um, it's going to line up like this. Then you're going to take the board. You're going to line it up this direction and stick it on top of there. Then slide the back kit, uh, the back plate over here like this. Uh, you're going to slide the bottom tab in down there first. Oops. Make sure that the circuit board doesn't move in the process though. Right, and then get this bottom tab in first. Like that. And then get the other this other tab in here as well. Great. So hold it in place. Make sure the buttons work. You go back to the center position once they're pushed in. So no issues there. Great. 
And then we'll go ahead and replace the three screws that we took out. At this point, you're probably thinking, dear Lord, I still have to wrap the, the third piece, and that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Now, I'm not going to actually show you how to wrap the third piece, because it's going to be exactly the same way as wrapping this piece, except that you don't have to deal with cutting the holes and taking this piece off and putting it back on. But, there you go. That's how it looks when it's done. So, I'm going to go ahead. We're just going to put it here on the steering wheel. Pop in the clip on this side first. Make sure everything's lined up. Oh wait, before I forget, before I forget. I need to replace the zip tie that we trimmed off earlier. So it's gonna sit on the front here like this. Actually no, it's gonna, sorry, it's gonna come around the back like this if you look at the old zip tie pattern. And then just put a new zip tie in place. I'm definitely getting a little tired. It may seem like a, a long video for you to be watching, but this has been much longer for me to be doing this process. I've, I've had to stop and restart this video several times. All right, so here's what it looked like. It should look like when it's uh, done. Wire runs around the back, zip tied into place. Now we're gonna go ahead, pop it in here, line up the clip on this side in place, pop it in. Great, so now I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in. Just needs to be in hand tight. There we are, so far so good. We're gonna go ahead and just put the airbag on top just to make sure that everything needs that needs to be covered is covered by the airbag. And it looks good. I don't see any exposed plastic on the side. Airbag horn is not obstructed by anything. Great, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the last piece. And But I'm not gonna show you the wrapping of that because like I said, it's gonna be the same the same way as you wrapped that piece. Um, but I will show you what the finished product looks like once that's wrapped. So the other piece was actually a lot easier to wrap. I got this done in 20 minutes. Um, it, you know, since I didn't have the holes to deal with, that made it easier and because I already had an idea how much I had to stretch the plastic to get it to work over this piece here, uh, that made this a lot easier. So just do some uh, post heating work out any air bubbles that I see, like these right here. I'm just gonna go ahead, give it a little bit of heat, put a little bubble in there, and then work out this air bubbles with my tool here. And then keep, keep giving it heat. All right, so once I'm done this, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this in the car. All right, so all four screws are back in place on here, and then of course the one holding the bottom piece in. So go ahead and uh, reattach your steering wheel. Make sure it's lined up correctly. Mine is a little bit tilted this way because that's how I took it off, but I've got the, uh, was able to reference a photo to see how it's gonna go back on. Um, then replace the nut back on here, and then just hand tighten it down and then give it, you know, give it a good twist at the end. So we got to put it back on here. There we go, and that should be good. So the steering wheel is not going anywhere. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, we'll reattach the airbag. Let me put the camera down for a second so I can grab the airbag. 
All right, so before we reattach the airbag though, let's reconnect the uh, volume control and stereo control harness and then the cruise control harness. Now I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand while holding the phone, so I'm gonna have to put the phone down for this, but basically just go ahead and reconnect your ground wire to the back here and then these um, will just basically pop it down into place and then push the yellow tab down and that will lock it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll show you again what it looks like once it's reinstalled. Actually, I got the, the black connector and the ground wire already installed so I can balance it on my knee high enough here to show you how easily these clip back in. So you just basically line it up, press the clip down, it'll click, and then push the yellow tab in and that's it, reinstalled. So push the airbag up into place here, line it up, press it down. You'll hear it click on both sides. It'll be nice and secure. And then all you have to do is uh, replace your plastic caps on the end here and then you're done. So there you go, carbon fiber wrapped steering wheel. Thanks for watching.